it is 2020 and it is the year of the snake. Actually, it's the year of the rat, but you know what? Let's just run with it because it fits the theme of the episode. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Doctor Who Reviews. And today we are talking about the Peter Davison serial Snake Dance, courtesy of Freezing Inferno. Yay. Speaking of which, I'll have that yay there. Speaking of which, my two usual co-hosts. Firstly, to my virtual left, he gives his life, not for mirrors, but for you. It's Freezing Inferno. <laughs> Took me a second to get what that was from, but great. Oh my gosh. And to my virtual right, her anaconda don't want none. It's Concave Usurper. <laughs> 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 oh I never God. thought I would say this, but I love you for that. <laughs> <laughs> This is why I'm glad there are limited songs that they're involving snakes. <laughs> oh my god, I'm actually crying now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> uh, snake oh, dance, gosh. then. Uh, Jerry, this was your pick. It was my pick, and I think you can see why. Yeah, gonna say right off the bat, good job. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, uh, we are tackling this in that order, as I said last time. This is the sequel story to a previous Peter Davison story called Kinda, which also featured the villain of the story, the Mara, which is yeah. a psychic snake thing that takes root in your mind and makes you bad and wants to manifest itself in our world. It's 500 years <clears throat> since the Mara was defeated. <laughs> Well, on this planet, anyway. It's a complicated thing. The previous story took place on a whole other planet, a jungle planet. It, it basically, I think it was, I think the symbolism there was this, a whole Christian mythology thing, you know. Snake in the Garden of Eden, making you bad, original sin. I, I think that's what it was going for, but it also has a sort of Buddhist yeah. meaning to it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's very complex, and it basically ends with a giant rubber snake surrounded by mirrors. So, I kind of like it. Well, yeah, yeah you I would. Why. But Snake Dance, I think, is a little better as a story than Kinda. It's 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 very debatable amongst the fandom which of the two is the better story. I, I, yeah, I, I'd say Snake Dance is more solid overall, but Kinda is a little more. I've seen them Weird both. Mother. Kinder's got a better ending, but Snake Dance is the more solid throughout, I would say. That, that makes sense. Ha- <laughs> Having seen the effects in both, I kind of like Snake Dance better. <laughs> that yeah, the <laughs> effects are better in Snake Dance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Of it's, course, that's not saying much. Well, no, this is the 1980s, but... <laughs> we should mention, Kinder is one of those stories that got the whole George Lucas treatment when it came to DVD. So they yeah. see the eye the sneak out because they shouldn't have bothered. Uh, they shouldn't have bothered. Which, snake which, dance is still the better uh, effect. Which uh, Elizabeth Sandifer, the Doctor Who critic, had the best retort to that: "Is you should just CGI Adric out while you're at it." <laughs> I forgot he was in that story. <laughs> yeah, he's in that. He's in Kinder. He's not in Snake Dance. This is why you picked it. This is why you picked it. I can deal so with Adric. Mean. So mean. We don't have to put up with Adric. Right? I picked Warrior's Gate. That had Adric in it. I know, I know. I'm messing with you. So, God. let's uh, dig into Snake Dance, I suppose. Yeah, well, uh, here's something I like right off the bat, is that it's an actual sequel to an existing, uh, to a previous serial. I mean, this happened a few times, but quite sparingly, and really sparingly in um, in the in the modern era. We almost got up to sleep no more. We were supposed to have a, 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 a story following that uh, ending up, and we never got it. Fortunate. Peladon got a sequel. Mm-hmm. I always get this, these two confused in order, but it's the Curse of Peladon and the Monster of Peladon. That's the order. That's the actual order, is it? Yeah. Yay for accidentally being correct. Uh, <laughs> for once. So it, it is interesting that we that we take a um, an original villain and we basically follow up on their story after they've previously been seemingly defeated. Well, it's funny because uh, the season this is, was in was actually the 20th anniversary season. And every story in it had a returning villain, 
but it was early 80s Doctor Who, so they were being really fanish about it, you know, fan service, all of this stuff. So basically, what this amounts to is uh, you've got the return of Omega from Five Doctors. From oh, Omega. God. Then you've got this, which has the Mara return from last year. Then you have, uh, yeah, then you have the Black Guardian trilogy, which we ended, which ends with Enlightenment. Really. Yeah. And then you have this dumb two parter in the Masters there. So, technically, it's every every story has a returning villain, but like half of them are just I'm the Black Guardian, uh, kill the Doctor, bash him over the head with a rock. <laughs> so what you're saying is Doctor Who was reusing plot points before Chris Chibnall thought it was cool. <laughs> I'm I'm saying. Well, here's what I'd say. Chris Chibnall was right there, seven years old, saying, "Wow, they're reusing plot points. It's so cool." <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. They taught him that. And then at 12 years, he was like, this is boring. They just ring around corridors and, and wait for monsters. If we ever do Earth Shock, you're going to be, like, really surprised and be like, oh my God. We are never going to do Earth Shock. Shock. I'm not going to pick Earth Shock. It's like a sense Oh, I know what I'm picking now. Oh, it's you like may a not wish of the to. Cyberman. <laughs> it's like Ascension of the Cyberman, but good. I'm being deadly serious that, now. But... You may not want to pick a shock. Yeah, if you don't know what happens. This, this is not some reverse psychology bullshit. It's you really do not want to pick a shock. See, the more you tell me not to, the more I want to do it. Okay, fine. Pick a shock. Okay. Now you're doing reverse psychology. <laughs> now so you now you're okay. condoning it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the point is that either way, you will not win. There are people this, who have so. seen her shock who will be either going, oh no, what's she done there? Or they will be chuckling evilly to themselves. <laughs> but this is not her shock. shock. This is Snake Dance. Um, I, 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 love, I love the Doctor's manic energy in the opening minutes here. <laughs> I love how Nissa keeps trying to show off that she changed her outfit and the Doctor doesn't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, this is, our, this is our introduction to Nissa, of course. Yeah, this is that. Well, this is our first Nissa story. Yeah. Behold, a, a somewhat competent companion in the 1980s. Yeah. Yeah, she definitely is not competent in dressing herself, though. The hell is she wearing? Yeah, she looks like Pippi Longstocking. <clears throat> she looks she... like if Colin Baker's coat threw up on her. Or I suppose oh for, for for a for a um, <laughs> that's a basic that's a basic description. <laughs> You know, what's funny is that Nissa was technically in Kinda. She spent the entire thing asleep in the TARDIS because of sci fi bullshit. But yeah, but she was in, was in it. In and at the end, she's just like, oh, hey, good morning, guys. What happened? So, <laughs> so what you're saying is Nissa was kinda in Kinda. Oh. <laughs> hey! <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, uh, I hope that low franking fruit is an apple because we got snakes all over the place. <laughs> oh my god <clears throat> okay so, I, I beat on that second one I, I, I beat on that second joke a little bit well done so run us, <laughs> run, run, us, run us through the run down here Rainy I can't help me the kinder yeah wait kinder? I think you mean <laughs> snake dance yeah yeah I mean snake dance yes you picked this I kinda this. got mixed up I you kinda got mixed this up one. kinder and snake dance <laughs> The least you can do is get them right. <laughs> run, us, run us through Snake Dance, Raniac. Okay. Well, um, so we've, we've got Nissa out here looking like the girl from Wendy's. We've got <laughs> the, the Doctor's manic energy. I love the Doctor's manic energy. He's, he's pushing her out the way. Uh, there's something wrong with Tegan. He doesn't really care about it. And they does, but... For the first few minutes, he's just like a law unto himself. It's great. <clears throat> it's Pete Peter Davidson. He's fun. In this. There's a meme, isn't there? Like, like, uh, what would happen if, if the various doctors met Colombo? Oh my god! And isn't Peter Davidson is immediately arrested? <laughs> <laughs> I sent you that, didn't I? You did. Okay, I figured. I can't remember he, if he was immediately arrested or not, but um, it's a very funny little <laughs> me. But Tegan is having 
bad dreams. In fact, she's having nightmares. She still ain't completely over the whole Kinda Mara possession thing. Yeah, and they, they actually just flat out mentioned the Mara here, like right off the bat. Yep. There is no surprise attempt to be maintained at all here. It's fairly obvious that we're going to be dealing with the Mara again. Mm. Well, at least they're not bullshitting us. That's the important part. Also, it's fitting that she's having a nightmare because the set kind of looked like an episode from Nightmare. <laughs> oh my god. It's also fitting that she has a nightmare considering the effects they used to get her up the stairs of that game. Yeah, those effects? Ooh, nasty. Oh. It's oh, like, yeah. okay, I get it. It was in the 80s, but come on, guys. <laughs> really? You can't have oh. her walk up the this, stairs? This is a strange serial because it's got some good effects and some bad effects, and that one certainly falls into the lock. <laughs> I, fa- I found that Columbo tweet, by the way. Yeah. Davison, Nissa solves the crime while he's berating Columbo. About yes, something. that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's more fitting. <laughs> uh, Tom Baker is the one who immediately gets arrested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. No lies detected there. <laughs> but yeah, it's a spooky dream, despite, you know, the bad, like, blue screen shuffling t shuffling tegan around like you're moving a jpeg <laughs> across the screen despite that it's like striking there's a dark cave a snake mouth it's like ooh, spooky. yeah but the, but the upshot is that the the, the uh the mara could still be alive in tegan's mind because it's like a psychic snake mind. yeah it's not physically alive but it is perhaps maintaining a presence in 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 tegan's mind Basically, I could sum this up up as blah, 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 darkness in the heart of man, blah, 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 insert kingdom hearts, blah, blah, blah. Insert kingdom hearts. hearts. Look, I am 90... Look, I have not played all of the games of the Kingdom Hearts series. There are so many of them. And the story is so convoluted by now that I'm 95% sure somehow the Mar are involved. Like I went I don't from know Kingdom how. Hearts one to two, and I was confused. I'm sorry. But one to two. I have I have very little exposure to Kingdom Hearts, but what my main memory of that is what, during one of the um either the ADGQs or SDGQs, essentially running that singing um you know uh, a whole new world, and Spike Vegeta joining in. Say, fellas, did somebody mention the door to darkness? <laughs> oh God. Well, I can explain Kingdom Hearts to you very simply, uh, Rainiac. Um, don't. Just don't. <laughs> so. I've been there since the beginning, and even I'm confused. I know enough about the plot. I know the fact that Sora in, in Kingdom Hearts 3 is way too happy about murdering everybody. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, so, uh, you're going to be recompleted. Smiles like he just killed someone. So, uh, Snake Dance. Yeah, back to Snake Dance. So. Tegan set the controls for the TARDIS along with the Doctor. He fed her coordinates or some such stuff, but I guess the Mara subconsciously manipulated her to put in a different set of coordinates. Yeah, she has no idea what she's done. She didn't do it, but they've taken the TARDIS to a planet called... Uh, what the fuck is Minusa. the called? Minusa. Minusa. Thank you. See, it's easy to remember because it kind of sounds like Medusa. Medusa. Oh my god, is that... Oh, I think mean, that's exactly what they were going for. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on. Really? Jesus Christ. You want to know the really <laughs> sad part? Is yeah. I actually looked up to see if any of the names meant anything. And you know how the um, prince guy or whatever his he actually is is named Lon? Mm-hmm. Guess what that means in Spanish? No. Noble. Oh, I thought you were going to say he's literally, no, th- uh, That's what I thought it might be, too. But no, he's literally Prince Prince. <laughs> and so he doesn't even drive a little red like Corvette. Nope. I think, did we just make this, did we just both make a different Prince joke? Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. That's how much we're in sync with Jimmy. It's frightening. <laughs> Do you think it rains purple there? Well, so Manusia, I can then. do it too, damn it! I can so, do it too. So Manusia, then <laughs> we get our major guest star of this uh, serial. He'll be very familiar to to uh, British viewers, probably not so much to uh, to you two. No, 
So Lon, who you've already mentioned, Prince Prince himself, is played by Martin Clunes. Who's this other than the actor who played Lon in Snake Dance? He's a, he's a, this is one of his early roles. He was in a, um, a popular BBC company called Men Behaving Badly. And then he mm-hmm. is most famous perhaps for playing a character called Doc Martin in an ITV uh, drama that's been going on for many years and will stop next year. So we, we know who he is. You necessarily won't. Decent actor. Probably better known as a comic yeah. actor. I think his lips act more than he does. <laughs> he looks like he looks like that old trend that used to be on uh, Instagram where people would like suction cup their lips so they grow huge and swollen. He, he will have a major role to play um, in this serial. Less of a role to play. I've just got in my notes, by the way. A world Martin Clunes appears, and that's that. A man in a Cossack hat appears. <laughs> oh, oh, this, the the carny. Yeah, and and then uh, and then in brackets, Rob Rob Rasputin. <laughs> <laughs> Good God! This is Ambril. Ah, oh, this guy. The director. Director. What an idiot! <laughs> What a dumbass! But I'm I'm pretty sure there's like a point to this beyond uh, just an obstacle for the doctor later in the story. But we'll get to that. So so Lon well, is the I son mean, of the. Sorry, go on, Cap. Well, I was just going to say there is a point to Ambrose in all this because he helps fight bronchitis. <laughs> oh my Remember god! Remember when I said I was looking up names to see if they meant anything? <laughs> yes. Oh my god. Ambrol is a drug that that helps with bronchitis. <laughs> oh my god. And oh. apparently Tanha means uh th- you know greed. So there's that. Yeah. Oh my oh damn, very on that, the nose that, here. That does, that does yeah. work into what I had for Ambrol. Prin- Prince god. Prince Greed and Bronchitis. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I, 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 okay, but I looked up and I got one that's gonna blow your mind. Oh it's, lord. Okay, here you go. Let me just uh, make sure. Oh I've god, he's linking right. something. Oh, it's a link. It's a I'm link. I'm not linking. I'm, no, I'm not linking it. I'm just t- Okay, okay. You ready for this? Oh lord. The, na- the name doctor means a qualified practitioner of medicine. Wow, get out what? of town. <laughs> You're shitting me. Shut the front door. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> you should stop. You yes. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> twenty minutes here. This has gone to hell in a handcart. Wonderful. Uh, yeah. Let's. Okay. Yay! Yeah. I did it. So th- these I are our um, these are our main uh, guest characters. Lon mm-hmm. is the son of the Federator. Like the, the ruler of Minusia, and um, Ambril is the director. Pompous busybody, basically. And sort of archaeologist in his own way. Sort of, yeah. It's not really. Well, he has an interest in the history of Minusia. Yeah. Then, we get, we, some, mention... then we get some, some scenes with some good acting from Janet Fielding. Oh, we should mention before that, because yeah. I've got it earlier in my notes, uh, Minusia was once called the Samaran Empire and was actually ruled by the Mara and the people. You know, they, they just went hog wild with all the darkest desires. Yes, because when the Doctor hears that name Sumarans, he, he panics. Yeah. yeah. But they went wild, but then they, like, enlightened themselves and banished the Mara from their minds. And I guess it ended up on Diva Loka somehow for Kenda. I guess. I, I guess. But basically, now... They treat that dark period of their history as a big festival, with you know cultural yeah, I celebration. Can, I can kind of understand that. Mm. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, this has parallels like with um, the Day of the Dead in Mexico. Yeah. yeah, it's like a it's like a creation myth or something. I'm just like, hey, this is part of our heritage. Yeah. Yeah. Or it's or it's like the uh, the Fourth of July for us Americans, where we celebrate the ending of the disgusting British Empire, which is only a myth. <laughs> well, the, the British Empire, the fact it was disgusting. <laughs> no, the, the British Empire. Um, it can't be a myth if it actually happened. 
No, yeah. no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that was just a myth. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, why wouldn't we be the greatest country in the entire world? Because I mean, look at us now. We're doing great. Help me. <laughs> oh. We're doing great. This is fine. <laughs> Help. This is fine. <laughs> As everything's just burning down around your feet. Oh, it's already been burnt down. I'm, I'm sitting in ash right now. Yeah, but now they're going to set fire to the ash. So, uh -huh. uh, you were saying about Janet Fielding? Yeah, she gets some good acting yeah. here in these uh, hypnosis scenes. Oh, yeah. So the, the Doctor basically um, has the idea of trying to, to hypnotize Tegan and basically connect with the Mara deep in the recesses of her mind. This goes about as well as you'd expect. Yeah. Yeah. The Mara in a deep voice telling them to go away. Basically. But lucky the thing that he, like, lashes up on the fly is a... I, I don't even remember the technobabble for it. Like a delta wave inhibitor or some shit. Or to call it what it actually uh, is. A Sony Walkman. An anti-dream machine in, in a Walkman. Yeah, you yeah. can call it that. It's a Sony Walkman. Yeah. yeah. It is. It is. Which was uh, quite... Hashtag not spawn. Well, the point is that the Walkman was quite a, a, a new uh, <laughs> a new piece of technology at the time. Also, yes, hashtag Tegan. not an ad. Tegan, you've taken my Delta Wave inhibitor and turned it into a cassette player for the Thompson Twins? <laughs> <laughs> No, what's really funny is the Sony Walkman is still a thing. They make MP3 players now. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yes. Yeah. Again, hashtag not spawn. And However, then... Sony, if you want to contact us, <laughs> we absolutely can make this happen. And then things just race by at quite a pace here. In fact, the, the entire series for me just flew by. Yeah, I don't have very many notes for episode one. Just because, it's it's you know, 24 minutes you know. a piece but the, and four parts, but... Um, <laughs> Before I knew it, I was watching the end credits of episode four. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's like good pacing yeah. or it's just really, really fast, but... Oh, I, I like to say really, really fast. I think it means I enjoyed it, so... um. Well, you just said you thought that it was good, yeah, so... Yeah, I anyway. said that. I said that before we were recording, but we are giving the game away. <laughs> should we mention... We should mention the carny real quick. Yeah! <laughs> Special, hey. special guest appearance in the state dance of, by Freezing Inferno as the Hall of Mirrors attendant. That's <laughs> a Doctor Who mirror alert. Yes, it is. There's a bit, there'll be more of them. There will be more of them. Oh, God. There'll yeah. be more of them. It's my pick. Yeah. You know what? It's my pick. We can't stop now. We're in mirror country. Uh, can I just say, I, I, I love the... <laughs> can I just say, I love the design of the set here? Oh, the yeah. Festival the, the Festival Bazaar or Market. Yeah, it's great. It is pretty cool. Yeah? It looks like it's properly fleshed out, like it could be something that actually exists. Yeah. There's some pretty good world building in this serial, but it oh, happens in part really four, good world building in which is strange. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I'd argue that a lot of the great world building happens all over the story. Yeah, but the, the majority of it happens in part four. <laughs> I would say for parts one and two, it's more about Tegan trying to deal with the mental invasion by the Mara. True. And then once you get into part three, that's where the story starts to really ramp up. Oh, yeah. 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 But this, this whole yeah. The Mirror's Attendant, um, the character's name, I think, is Doug Dale. Uh, I, Interesting I, I fact about that. him. What's that? He's played by Brian Miller. I don't know who that is. Well, he's the partner of, Sarah, of Elizabeth Sladen. Oh. Or was a partner of Elizabeth Slade at one time. Oh, right. I, I don't know if they if they split up or what, but uh, yeah. Well, I mean, they're, they're split up now. No, no. Considering. Jerry. <laughs> I mean, it's, a, it's just a fact. I'm not saying. I know, but the way you said that, Jerry. Uh, no, no. I, I, no disrespect. Rip in peace. Uh, he's still alive. I meant to Liz Sladen. And you're you're absolutely right, by the way. Elizabeth Sladen, they were married till the till her death. There you go. So that is sad. Yeah. Oh. Oh. But yeah, he's 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 Doug Dale here. He has a, he has an encounter with Lon, which doesn't go very well. I love 
Because he's just like, he's sitting there hyping the shit up. Hurry, 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 come and come and face the dark recesses of yourself. Ooh, children have price. Yeah. And then Lon, and then Lon comes in and is like, oh, he doesn't know he's a prince. He's just like, what's in your booth? Oh, it's it's just it's just mirrors. It's just mirrors, my lord. Just 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 funny mirrors. Yeah. Cute scene. It's not the last we'll see of him, but definitely not. Yeah, it's Although, almost like he becomes a porn or something later. He probably wished it was the last we saw of him. Yeah. yeah. Not spoiling anything at all. Uh, <laughs> No, that's for later when we spoil everything that happens yeah. in the episode. Um, then the Doctor arrives on Manusa with Nissa and Tegan. Tegan's still wearing the um, the magical dream-blocking Walkman. And uh, everything starts to go to hell. Basically. The Doctor just blunders into uh, into the cave where Lon, Ambrose, and Tana are, are right there, along with, um, oh, what's it, Chella? Oh, yeah. Is, is Chella there? Is there? I think he is. Because he's the director's well, assistant, so it makes sense. Well, okay, let's. I think he is, but we'll um... argue and say yes, he is. But anyway, I also the, can't the doctor and, and the director immediately do not like each other. Yeah. But yeah, Lon is more willing to listen to him. They're all up in there because of Lon is getting ready for some the, the Keystone ceremony. About yeah. The Mara, you know. The banishing of the Mara from the dark places of the mind. The ceremony celebrating that. Yeah. Meanwhile, while the Doctor is talking to these people, Nyssa has been given one job to look after Tegan and fails visibly in the one job. I don't blame her. I blame the stupid motherfucker yeah, the, who the... comes up to Tegan who's afraid that a, a snake, a psychic snake monster has possessed her mind and starts waving a goddamn rubber snake in her face. Well, like, he wasn't to know that, that, in fairness. But it's, it's also, we, we, um, we, we didn't mention the, the fortune teller part. That's after that's this. A, that's, after. that's after. That's after this. Well, that's no, the, no the because the fortune, teller, the fortune teller part happens in um, part one, and then it continues into part two, yeah, but, after but, which the doctor goes into the cave. No, no, no. I'm looking at it on the fucking wiki. It yeah. says here, Tegan enters a fortune teller's tent. Part two, Tegan escapes from the and tent. And before that, because I'm that, also looking at the, wi- at the wiki. After that, the doctor has appeared in the cave where Lana's having a lesson on the Mara legend, so fuck you. Weird. That's, yeah, that's 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 wrong then. That's out of sequence, but, um. Fuck you. No, thank you. A wiki, um, a wiki being wrong? Who could not? Who could send guess? for the man. Anyways. But anyway, she, Tegan runs away because this toy salesman, this merchant, <laughs> wears a toy oh. snake in her face and she panics, throws off the... Um, oh, no, she doesn't throw it off. She, she just runs off. No. Nissa doesn't chase after her. She goes for the doctor instead to be like, hey, hey yes. oh, no, it's... And, yeah, but... Uh, then we get to basically uh, Tegan fainting and getting brought into the fortune teller. <clears throat> Yeah, this this strange fortune teller who tugs the dream thing off her ears immediately so T can, can hear her. And it's remarkably frank about the fact she's a con artist. Yeah, that, that is really weird. Some interesting she's social like, commentary there. She's just <laughs> telling T get her entire life story. And it's like, why would okay. you do that? She's like, that I don't actually tell our... the future. I just tell people what they want to hear. That does lead to the part one cliffhanger, which is pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will say mind. one thing. One thing about this fortune teller that I would have found really cool is if the Mara, by being in someone's presence, caused them to um, essentially confess their sins. Like the fortune teller, you know, cons people into um, thinking that she's a real fortune teller. Maybe if something like that was brought up, that would be pretty cool. But this is pretty no, much di- no disrespect, by the way, happened. to the fortune teller's actress. But uh, whenever she was talking, all I could think of was the shopkeeper from Star Fox Adventures. Oh my god! <laughs> you <laughs> pay this much? God. But yeah, Tegan gets fully possessed by the Mara, and then and... the Mara manifests a giant snake skull in yep. the crystal ball. <laughs> I think it's really funny later. Surprisingly good looking snake skull. 
<laughs> Nick, have you seen Pip Madley's uh, Who You should have a bitch. This is my notes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is where he um, got the meme from. This is where he got the fortune this, teller this meme, from. meme comes from. Yep. <laughs> it, it's just a guy takes the scene, except he edits different weird shit into the crystal ball. Yeah, Pip is great. Right. He, he's, he's done this a lot. He's done it with the Mavellans <laughs> famously. Mavellans. Day 41. What are the Mavellans <laughs> watching today? Oh god! Yeah, that takes us through to part two. Yeah, and the beginning of part two, we've got um, the Morris now fully possessed Tegan. So it's like she is evil Tegan. She is evil Tegan. Oh my god! (laughs) But she um, she's clearly having a lot of fun playing evil Tegan. You know what's funny? Uh, on the previous season's Blu-ray, the Peter Davison season one Blu-ray, they have this special features. Where the cast wa- rewatch the episodes, and one of the things they use at the top of like introducing each segment, like introducing the general like feature, is a. It's obviously a Janet Fielding watching Kinda, and she just says, "I'm not taken. I am evil." <laughs> <laughs> So that, so that just popped in my mind. Really. J- Janet Fielding is the MVP of this of this story. Oh, she's great. <laughs> just gives a fantastic performance. It's fun. You know, something that kind of got to me about this is that um, in the beginning, while she's being as quote unquote evil Tegan, uh, just after she gets the um, the fortune teller all spooked out and everything. She's mm-hmm. essentially acting like a little kid. Oh, this is adorable. Oh, yeah, this scene. It is. She, it is, but it's Nipa. still really weird. Um, it doesn't really come up anywhere other than um, at one point where the doctor's talking to hypnotize Tegan in the beginning before he gives her the dream machine. She Maybe. says, like, uh, that she, at one point I remember her saying she's uh, six years old or something yeah. like that. I, ha- I, have a, I have a theory. Uh-huh. Mara was buried in the deep recesses of Tegan's mind, so it bursting out is regressing back from that. So Tegan, yeah, the, the deep recesses in mind tend to be a childhood. Yeah. So it's well, taking. Yeah, that but part still, of it it still isn't really brought up again. It's not. No. That's just my take on it. But anyway, she's just like, I frightened the fortune teller. <laughs> What's the Mara? I'm fine. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And then she runs off. I do love her acting in this, though. Uh, it's also she... now canon that Tegan was an asshole as a kid, so there's that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who wasn't an asshole as a kid? Can I be honest with you? Having watched Enlightenment yeah, now, having yeah. watched this snake dance, Tegan is fast becoming one of my favorite classic companions. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Ooh. Just really like her as a character. Good. I She's like good. her actress. I don't know enough about her to make that call. Fair mm-hmm. enough. Well, we'll probably we might see more Peter Davison here stuff. Sometime. I think for the most so. part, the companions are a strong part of Davison's run. I mean, obviously, people do not like Adric, but uh... well, <laughs> and another Adric's companion who, who lasted two episodes is not that great either. But uh, uh, well, that companion. We don't blame the companion. We blame the curse around that companion. Yeah. <laughs> and the person that decided that was a good idea to put them in the show as well. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Oh, well. Who could have foreseen? Well, we're being uh. vague about that, but anyway. Uh... Well, we, we might come to that story in the future. <clears throat> I, I do like the next scene that comes where the doctor comes to Ambrose's office. Oh, the six face of delusion? No, no, that's not this. Hang on, is this here yet? It's not quite here. Well, it's it happens in this area. I don't have any notes for, for part two, but um, but I what I had noted is the scene where the doctor's like, "The Mara's gonna come back! Holy shit! You've got to cancel the festival. She's back. The Mara's back, and she's gonna destroy us all." And the director just goes, "Sure, yeah, okay, I'll cancel everything. Great, okay, uh, <laughs> bye now." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's it, it, that was after that. That that bit's after that. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, but that bit you're talking about is great. Yeah. But the next thing I have noted is another Doctor Who mirror alert. The mother of all Doctor Who mirror alerts, potentially. We've got we've got Tegan possessed by the Mara 
in the Carney's house of mirrors, just fucking around and laughing at how silly she looks in the mirrors. And then skull. <laughs> and then her head turns into a snake skull. And the best part is, whenever the Mara talks to her, the skull starts <laughs> talking too. It's beautiful. It's yeah, yeah, because the skull is the Mara. <laughs> it's so funny. Or rather, the skull is how she sees the Mara. I mean, every, everything from the, 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 the puppet skull head superimposed over Janet Fielding's head to the way the mirror makes her body look weird to just the voice. <laughs> <laughs> but if, you, if you've been to a hall of mirrors, everyone does that. Oh, my God. Like they, sort of, they sort of bend over and they, and they like duck down and sort of look and contort themselves in weird ways in the hall of mirrors. Oh, yeah, sure, but it's really funny because this is the Mara who were defeated by mirrors before. Yeah. Mm. Well, the, well, they state, well, the Mara states later that in at the end of Kinda, the Mara was trapped in a circle of mirrors with no gaps, but these mirrors have gaps and shit, so the, it's not the same thing. So it is kind of the Mara, like, <laughs> you fucking mirrors, you can't get me now. A likely Ooh. story. <laughs> this, this is Rainiac, if you ever get a mirror. So you're just like, the mirrors can't hurt me now, Jerry! The mirrors can't hurt me now! <laughs> yeah. then, then we get the second bit between the Doctor and uh, Ambrail, or Director Nincompoop, as I'm now christening him. Director <laughs> Nincompoop! <laughs> well, yeah. he is! Yeah. Oh my god. Not to, not to be well, rude, I but mean, the man's an idiot. I mean, I've he's got... not like the dude from Inferno, but he's up there. He's uh, not like the dude from Inferno. I don't hate Ambrail. I just think he's an idiot. He is an idiot. He's yeah. kind of obstinate, you know. He's nowhere near Stalin, though. But I do have one thing noted here, that apparently the legend of the Mara, it'll return in a dream, which is very gonzo spiritualist, and also basically kind of what happened. Yeah. But that leads us to, oh, the scene. You want to talk about Ambrose being an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this this wonderful six faces of delusion. So he's, he's got this mask, this head this headdress actually. You pop a picture of that on the screen for Yeah, of course. And he has this this headdress like, with five, five faces, of faces on it. <laughs> and he says it's called the six faces of delusion, but there are only five faces on it. It's like as no soon one... as you see it, you know where this is going. Yeah. But he doesn't. He's he doesn't. Like, no. He's just there smiling. For years, archaeologists have wondered why they call it the six faces of delusion, not five. The ancient Samarans couldn't even fucking count. <laughs> the and then the doctor out. just <clears throat> puts it on. <clears throat> yeah, because it it's a headdress. Just put it on. Humor me. Okay, now count the faces. One, One two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, six. Five. Ah, but six. six. The wearer's face, the the wearer's face is the sixth face. Is like, isn't that's pretty obvious, don't you think? Get out! <laughs> he throws him out immediately. Can <laughs> <laughs> you make a fool of me in my own house? Oh my god! I love that. I love that. And then we cut back to the hall of mirrors, and, and uh, a, a decent visual effect, I guess. Oh, the snake tattoo. Yeah. It's it quite low budget, but it, look, it looks all right. It looks better than it did in Kinda. Yeah. Which I have I not have saying a, a lot. I, no, I'm going to say I'm not saying a huge about. I have a theory about the visual design of the snake and snake dance and how it relates to Kinda, but we'll wait until we get to more examples of that. But yeah. Snake dance looks pretty good. But anyway, Doug, Doug Dale, the, the, the <laughs> attendant, spots Tegan talking to herself in the Hall of Mirrors. And he probably wished he'd walked away at that point, but he doesn't. He, he seems like a very Robert Holmes rogueish character. That analogy makes sense to you. Yeah, it, it does, but he doesn't really get a huge amount to do. <laughs> no. But he does have that same sort of rogueish charm. Like, uh, what's his face from the visitation? He reminds me a bit of the guy from Nightmare in Silver. Which guy? Uh, Webley. I have no idea who Webley is. Uh, he ran the he ran the amusement park. Oh, I got okay, okay, yeah, yeah, I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha. you. And got converted, partially converted into a Cyberman. Hmm, same kind of weird shit going here with people 
with people getting possessed by Dr. Yeah. Only it ends a lot better for Don't Tell It does for Wigley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, he was later <laughs> on in Deep Breath. Oh my gosh, what? Wait. Yeah. Medley? Yeah. No, he wasn't. Really? Yeah. Okay, neat. Um, I don't remember this at all. Brian Miller, who played Duckdale. Oh, Duckdale. He, he was in. He was in Deep Breath. Oh, as, Brian uh, Miller was in Deep Breath. Oh, you meant Webber? Yeah. Was, no. no, sorry. Wait, who was Brian Miller in Deep Breath? He was a guy named Barney. I don't know exactly oh, who that is. Oh, he was the victim of um. Oh, he, he was the half faced man's victim. Okay. Yeah. When it when he said um, you know, <clears throat> I, about his eyes, I accept your gift. He's oh, the one who uh, who switched coats with the doctor. Oh, okay, okay. But uh, Dumbledore here, he's well, he's sort of taken over now by by Tegan slash Damara. Well, not quite taken over. Oh, actually, no, he's he's oh, he's yeah. recruited. Oh, he's recruited. Hmm. Yeah, for he's some recruited by she Tegan. Doesn't possess him. Not yet, anyway. Well, because Damara has a better target in mind. Yeah, Why? when. I swear, we, oh, did it. we did it again, didn't we? <laughs> we both said long together Lon, in the exact same second. It's Lon who happens to just be the um, descendant of the original person who defeated the Mara. Poetic. Mm-hmm. But, it's almost yeah, like the Mara planned this or something. This is so, wild, because Dugdale basically comes into to like Lon's chambers. And Lon's just like, oh, who are you? Oh, the guy from the Hall of Mirrors before. Go away. <laughs> well, this That's is happening. Like the Doctor has returned to the TARDIS with Nyssa. They've yeah, abandoned looking for Tegan, which is not a good idea. <laughs> and this, this blue crystal comes into play. This blue jewel. Ooh. I can't remember where he got the jewel from. Chella gave it to him before... Oh, yeah, Chella gave it to him before he was thrown out. Um... So he, he goes to the TARDIS to monitor the wavelengths of it. Mm-hmm. And then he and Nissa sit on the floor of the TARDIS and they sort of meditate. Mm-hmm. And the jewel will light up, but only when they <laughs> concentrate about it. You can project thoughts into the jewel. The jewel... Yeah. It yeah. transforms... It transmutes thought into energy. And the which... jewel was the was the was originally the um, possession of Dojin, who was the previous director. Ambril's predecessor. Who started believing all the Mara shit and went up into the mountain to do the titular snake dance, which is like becoming one with nature and letting snakes bite you to enter Nirvana or something to stop the Mara from influencing That's your That's very mind. Native American. Just a bit, yeah. I, I was getting a <laughs> lot of vibes from this, especially in the ceremony to- towards the end of uh, part four. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's all sorts of cultures um, ceremonies thrown in here, I think, like um, yeah. indigenous peoples, Native Americans. I think some South American cultures in there, Chinese, Indian. There's definitely yeah. a Buddhist flavor to be read in the story. At least it's handled better than other Doctor Who uh, interpretations of foreign cultures. And I mean, with, with the with the Mara's first encounter yeah. being on Deva Loka, De- Deva being a an Indian word. There you go. I think there's definitely some 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 uh, Hindi and in, Indian influence there, but um, mm-hmm. while um, while they're meditating on the TARDIS, Dudel fetches Lom, brings him to the Hall of Mirrors, and Tegan probably possesses Lom. Hey, and it's neat. They they hold hands and up your arm goes a snake tattoo. And now the Mara. Yep, now there are two of them. <laughs> Oh boy! And our, our cliffhanger is um, Martin Clutch gets a nice evil cackle. Well, before that, the doctor gets evil. imprisoned by director Nincompoop. Yeah, there's one thing to mention: <laughs> it's that the Mara's plan, as it opens up a secret passage in the cave, and does some shit. It wants the Great Crystal, which is a big version of that thought to energy crystal. Amber has in possession. It wants to use that to reoccur in the mind. Yep. But yeah, the cliffhanger's wild because, like, 
Dugdale sitting in this secret passage in the cave, scared to fucking death. And Tegan's just saying, look at me. Look at me. Yeah, I love this. And when they and when he looks, it's Tegan's voice coming out of Lon's mouth. Yeah. And they both start laughing. <laughs> these two these two provide the inspiration for Prisoner Zero. And I love the I love the cliffhanger shot, which is a laughing Tegan with glowing red eyes. Yeah. Great stuff. It is a good shot. That's, I think, uh, I think they were both uh, having a lot of, of, of fun here. <laughs> That takes us to, to, to part two, and part three begins with, well, a little bit of an issue for me. So, here's the thing about 80s Doctor Who. The previous year, Peter Davison had a story called Visitation, which is a pretty good story. I, I think it's decently regarded, would you say, Rainy? I'd say it's underrated, yes. It's, it's fine, middle of the road. But it has a very important moment in, in, a in the show's history. A notable moment in that scene is when the, vil- is the villain of that story catches the doctor trying to do shit with the science screwdriver, tells him to drop it at gunpoint, and then blows it up. This was done at the behest of the producer, who thought, the sonic screwdriver makes the doctor too powerful. It makes him too easy to get out of these situations, which, if he ever lived to see the modern day, I wonder how he did that. But... Oh, so it's the start of the magic wand thing? Yeah, it, he's basically do, he he got rid of it because he thought it was. It was an attempt wand. to stop the magic wand. Yeah, stop the magic wand. It didn't so. work. Mm. Well, it led to its own problems, in a sense. So Namely, the doctor that, is now locked in a cage and can't get out for an entire episode while the episode happens around him, which this story is mostly brilliantly paced, but this does feel like another writer's got to eat problem yeah where you got a perfectly yeah. good three-part story but you could have maybe re- re- retrofitted retro- this into three 30-minute episodes <clears throat> you probably could yeah yeah if you you just pace out the lore dumps a little more although in fairness the, the, the doctor was an idiot because he burst into <clears throat> them having dinner what, what the hell do you think they were going to do yeah you it does kind of feel them. like there's a there's basically a pool of ideas that they could pull from when they need to delay scenes Mm-hmm. So they have, like, the asshole who doesn't listen to the doctor and makes shit worse. They have the doctor gets locked up someplace that he can't get out of. Or we just have, you know, the doctor gets himself into a stupid situation, a la the cliffhanger from Dragonfire. I will give the episode this, at least the asshole who doesn't listen to the doctor this time. The doctor, from his perspective, is sounding like an absolute raving lunatic, yelling, Miss Surreal, Mr. Real, this giant mythical snake is real, why don't you believe me? Yeah. Instead of just, uh, Mr. Stallman, can we turn down the power for some safety? No! Why? Because it said so. That's yeah, just... it's a more believable reason for him to not be believed. Yeah. yeah. Especially since crazy people have been telling people the same exact thing for so long. It's obstinance that comes from character, not obstinance for the sake of, oh no, Obst- if it's not, the plot will be over. Another bit that um, kind of didn't sit well with me, just because just because I saw it coming a mile away, we see this old hermit at the beginning of the of this story, of the, of part three. Uh huh. And well, I, I've literally got to rip my nose. Oh, shot. this is totally dojin, isn't it? He's actually yeah. the first shot of the episode in part he one. He is. He is. Yes, but he's all he's he's shown again in this one. I will say oh, that I... did get me one way with that. I thought maybe he would be like. Kind of like how the Mara is now, where he's trapped mentally someplace. So the doctor has to literally use his mind to find him. But then, no, it just Ooh. turns out he's a real person. That's it. That could be interesting. But I know yeah, the doctor's locked up in in a big ass jail cell. But Chella gives him Dojin's old notebook just to you know research things and figure out. All while Nissa is sneaking around to get the key to free the doctor. Yeah, so not for the about. first time during her time in the TARDIS, Nissa's left alone to sort things out. I like Nissa. It's good that she, it's at least good that she gets an episode focus. Well, uh, she gets five minutes because uh, unfortunately, this particular edition of Metal, Ge- Metal Gear Nissa is interrupted by Tanner. I actually wrote Metal Gear Nissa <laughs> in my notes. How are we I was doing just this thinking tonight? she's trying to solid snake. 
I'm not kidding. How did we all get three get that? I'm sending my notes over right this second. <laughs> Make dance notes. I was trying so hard to remember what the name of uh, the chick was from the first Metal Gear. And Meryl? I called it. Meryl. Yes, Meryl. I was trying to remember if that was. Is what it was. I was going to say uh, she's trying to stall a snake, and instead she wore Merrells. <laughs> oh my god! <clears throat> but anyway, Tanner catches her in the act. She's Get also locked up with head. the doctor. <laughs> anyway, uh, here's the thing that I find interesting with regards to Amber. Uh, now, do I did I take did I take notes of this on the thing? Oh, okay, I took notes about it later. Yeah. But uh, if I can jump ahead a bit, part of the ceremony at the end of the story is temptations and whatnot, and I, I forget what exactly what the third temptation is. Greed. Greed, Greed yeah. 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 And that's exactly what Lon, well, Mara in the Lon's bot in Lon's body, is tempting Amber with. Because in the secret passage, like ancient Nusen Empire, Sumaran Empire artifact. Yeah. And he just casually takes one, and he's like, Hey, uh, you think I can see the great crystal ceremony? Oh, no. Out of the question. Oh, really? Well, uh, what if I showed you this? Oh, my God. This is an authentic artifact. Where did you find it? Oh, really? It's like a priceless artifact? I mean, I saw a million. Of them. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, mother of shit. So I like... wouldn't call <laughs> this greed. I yeah, would call I'm... this he's a little too far into academia. I would call it pride. To... Yeah, pride, greed, yeah, pride, pride greed, is, some, sounds better. It's more pride than greed. Well, yeah. Yeah. Either way, you I, fool! I, it belongs I, to the museum. Yeah, exactly, but he—it's a guy who's possessed by a snake offering <laughs> something that could be knowledge to a person. Oh my God! Where there have we, go we heard that before? There we go. Yeah. Okay. That. that yeah. But definitely. So they make it worse both for Christian mythology and their own made-up mythology yeah. for Medusa. Yeah. So that's really interesting. Yeah. Pride, grieve, whatever you want to take it. Amber is tempted. And that's part of the whole faith of their religion. But, but, but Team Evil's plan here involves them luring <laughs> um, Amber to the, to the cave. Yeah, they want to get yes. the Great Crystal at the uh, ceremony, which normally wouldn't happen. And they're tempting him with all this priceless artifact bullshit to do it. And breaking some of them. <laughs> We also get from Dojin's notes that the fact that Snake Dance is doing the whole thing he's doing up in the mountains, it purifies the mind if you fight off the Mara influence. So it's very Zen in a way, in its own weird Gonzo way. I like it. Yeah. And then we get a Punch and Judy show. It had to be Punch and Judy, didn't it? God damn it. Okay, but this ties into something I, which I think I'm not sure about the fan reception in 1982, 1983 versus now, but I'm sure they had like their fans back. Doctor Who, the fan community was a thing at this time, and it also has to be said that Kenda has a giant dumb rubber snake at the end of it. Which I'm sure many people, Doctor Who fans thought was a bit ropey. They still do today, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so think about the fact that this Punch and Judy show ends with one of the puppets getting attacked by a, a snake puppet. And then go ahead when they have a bunch of guys at the ceremony leading up to the cave. And they're all carrying around a giant snake puppet like a Chinese dragon at New Chinese New yeah. Year's. Now, those snake puppets look remarkably similar to the actual snake puppet prop used in Kenda. Yeah. And it left me thinking, is this some sort of meta commentary? Because the snake in Snake the Myron Snake Dance does not look like Kenda. It's a very, it's a much darker brownish yellow. Mm, are they poking for their own bad prop? Yeah, is this a meta commentary? The fact that Manusa makes Mara effigies that look exactly as stupid and hokey as the Mara effigy in Kinda? It's, Could be. It's just something to think about. It, it's, that'd be really I, I should point out that in, in Punch and Judy, it's usually a crocodile that attacks Mr. Punch. 
Oh, cute. But they changed so it to a snake. snake, so I like that. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> that's, that's a nice little uh, change that they, they do here. I like that. Yeah. So, so uh, um, due to uh, being threatened and also the, uh, the the law of the artifacts, Emperor agrees to Team Evil's plan. Yep. And then well, a, a he doesn't plumbing... know what's an evil plan. He just knows that they're going to be taking the the great crystal and putting it yeah. back into the snake mouth. I, inside I'm just the calling game. Lom, Tegan, and and Dundale Team Evil just for supposed to say. Well, but... To be fair, at this point, Dundale is just like frozen in a trance thanks to the Mars influence. So yeah. He's not doing anything evil. He has been possessed now, but I wouldn't call it possessed. I'd call it like frozen. Yeah, I think it's more that he's terrified of the fact that there's these two crazy people, one mm. of them being his uh, ruler. Yeah. yeah, that's true. <clears throat> uh, and then a, then a snake manifests on Tegan's arm, like a real snake. Oh, I like... <laughs> which would be a good effect. That is not a real snake. Which would be a good effect. <laughs> that is well, not a good snake. It, it's a rubber snake, but the point is it's no longer a tattoo. It's an actual. It's supposed to be an actual snake. It's really what? just like a rubber snake being inflated, not your own. And this will be a good good moment. We're not for the constant camera cuts. Oh, my gosh. It's really a rough effect. Uh, I hate that in action films, and I hate it here. It would be a better effect if they also didn't focus so much on the very obviously fake head of the snake. Yes. <laughs> which looks really bad. There is that. There is a scene involving Metal Gear Nissa that's really silly, where like Nissa sneaks into the director's office to get the key to the cell, and like she gets it, but then Lon's mother is behind her. Like, how did she not hear and come in the room? And she had a guard with her too. Yeah. Christ sakes! But that gets Nissa locked up with the director, and uh, they come to the realization. Nisik actually is the one who realizes that the crystals are structurally perfect and couldn't be a thing that occurred naturally. So they had to be made by advanced technology. So we're They're going man with the... made. So As is the Mara, perfect. technically. The Mara Empire was actually logically advanced, even more so than Manusa seems to be now. If they could do feats of molecular engineering like that to create those crystals okay slight side note which has absolutely well it has something to do with this episode but i not that much i need to share this with you two um uh -oh. it's up to you rainiac if you want to include this or not is it really but whenever because you it's say this is not is it really up to me oh here we go well there's a real person involved uh and i don't know if you want to include that or not but that was just epic <laughs> oh hot oh hot that's God amazing damn. Look how oh, awesome that is. That is great. A plus to you, cosplayer. I can always blur the face out. But Yeah, yeah that's, plus that's... I have um I have the link, so I can give you the link to the to where um she actually post put all Yeah, but as as Fred, Fresno just said, A plus to that oh, cosplayer. That's really good. That's no, fantastic. Yeah, I, I like that. <laughs> and uh, where, there's where, the link. Where was it? That somehow looks even better than the episode. <laughs> So where, where was it? Okay, so... It's so time for the cliffhanger before, number three, then. So, well, 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 for, for, wait, 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 hang on. Before sorry, that, yeah. The crystals, as it turns out, they absorbed all the, like, dark energy in the people of the Samaran Empire's minds. So, you know, all the dark despair thoughts, negative energy, blah, blah, blah. It absorbed it all, and from that actually created the Mara. So the Mara is like this despair despair energy personified i so, i think i think what the way that they put it is that the people themselves became the mara and that they uh -huh. twisted themselves into these sort of snake forms <laughs> maybe the real mara inside us all this time I, i'm i'm typing well, this, i mean I yes know. they they were inside them all this time but still no no <laughs> no no the mara <laughs> I'm not going to say that on the podcast because it's a spoiler for a game, but <laughs> it broke you. No, no. The Mara is not <laughs> It's not that person. How dare you, sir? Okay, go 
Uh, I'm sure there's a way to hide spoilers on YouTube. We can we can slip it in there somewhere. I've I've I've, well, I've already taken care of that. Yeah. I, that's why I didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, cliffhanger three. I did because uh, I'm an idiot, but I'll I'll take care of it in in post production. Don't worry about. It. Cliffhanger three <laughs> is uh probably is definitely the weakest of the bunch. How it's dare you say that? God damn it. It's very generic. The sad thing is you're yeah. right as well about, about it being that person. You're absolutely right. I knew it. But you want to get but to yeah, the it's, it's three? But yeah, it's quite weak and generic. Although, this gives a good scream. Oh. So, I, I think I've mentioned this before. This, this documentary on one of the DVDs about talking about cliffhangers, good and bad. And this is in one of the bad ones. And whoever it was said... Nissa buries her face in the doctor's coat and, re- coat and realizes she's allergic to the fabric. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the cliffhanger is basically Chella breaks the doctor and Nissa out and they try to escape. But then guards surround him and they try to give up, but Lan is just like, ah, got you now. Kill them! Scream. Cut to, cut to credits. I wonder what the resolution to this cliffhanger could be. Oh, wait. Lan's my I, I will say this. The, 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 I like the design of the guards. And they, and they remind me of something, and I can't put my finger on what. Is this a bit, or do you not? Really? No, it's not a bit. They remind me in their design of something. Okay. And I can't think of what it is. They remind me of something from something else. Uh, the, yeah, so is it really before... obvious? Is that what you're saying? Is it a bit? No, no, I, I thought you were going to go, they remind me of something, but I don't know what. Oh, wait, and then you drop the link and we all laugh. No, I, I can't think of what it is. I, I genuinely can't think of what it is. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. But if anyone's got any ideas, discount... answer on a postcard, please. I know what they looked like. They looked at, like, discount stormtroopers. Uh, no, but we'll go with that. Yes, so... yes, yes, they do. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Discount stormtroopers like do not have swords. Discount they're, they're... samurai st- stormtroopers. Oh, right. well, they don't remind me, but that that's, looks like very Greek armor to me. Okay. Yeah. But that's not what sure. I'm getting at. It, it, it's something from a from a TV show or a, or a film or something. Shall or we, a uh, video game, and I can't think what it is. Four. Yeah, so the reason why he says kill them, by the way, is that, uh, and the reason why Chella breaks them out of jail, because you missed that bit, is that Long returns to his mother with the terrified director Nincompoop, who oh, yeah. basically says, we're, u- we're using the uh, the crystal in the ceremony tomorrow. Chella's like, wait a minute, you can't do that. Yeah, yes, we can. I, I can do whatever I uh, yeah. want. So Chella obviously knows something something's up. And Long has got these coverings on his hands. Oh yeah, because on, he's on got a giant. Because he's got they're a like, giant um, snake Yeah, he's got to cover it yeah. up. Yeah, they kind of look like falconry gloves, where they're just like these giant yeah. ass things that go all the way up to his elbows. Big yeah, leather gauntlets, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But well, the doctor, Nissa, and Chella get away, and now they have to go up to the mountains to find Dojin and pick him up on the telepathic wavelength. So it's fair to say that part three was maybe the weakest part of the four of them. Absolutely. We I we mean, do get some some interesting effects. We do get some some important plot developments, but it's quite weak. Part four tips that on its head. Yeah. Part, part four is really is, strong. Part, part three is a lore dump because the yeah. Part four is a is a world building dump. Yeah, it's it's neat. The giant Chinese well, snake puppets that you mentioned earlier. Yeah, so. <laughs> oh my. Wait a minute. Hang on. Didn't. When we announced Snake Dance and we looked at weren't we like. Wasn't one of you like. That, there's no way that's the real. Thing. Oh, that was Caliban on Twitter. Yeah, Caliban. Yeah. Caliban the third. Yeah, Hi, Caliban. <laughs> that shit's so real. I, I, I said that we, it's real, baby. I said that we'd taken the. <laughs> we, we weren't doing it last week because it was a it was a bank holiday and I'd, I'd made other arrangements. There was a scheduling conflict and I put up a picture of, of the puppeteer with the snake. Yeah. And he's like, fuck <laughs> you, there's no way that's an actual part of the episode. It is. It is, honey. <laughs> Caliban, I got news for you, buddy. 
Speaking in of- fact, in fact, I hate to say this, dude, but um, that puppet snake actually plays into the climax of part four. Yeah, it does. That's it's a big part of it. Speaking of uh, absolute weird design bullshit that actually is in the episode, Lon's ceremonial outfit. Oh, 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 to talk about this piece this of bullshit. This is right after the Aztecs. Oh my god. My notes for this were simply, oh my god, what are you wearing? <laughs> There's a lot no, going on you know, this outfit. You know what this makes me think? You know what this makes me think of? Yeah. Hang on, I gotta, I, gotta fi- I gotta find this. Oh no. Okay. okay, we're finding a thing. And here we go. Here hang we on, go. hang on. Here we go. There's, there's, there's some other uh, nice little bits of um, world building here. The, the attendant demons. Oh, this bit. This is cute. I didn't yeah. know that was cute. These little guys in cat demon costumes. And they tag you okay. and you have to give them a coin. Or like, they tip water over your head. And that actually reminds me of something that happened to me in real life that I'll get to as soon as Cat's linked this thing. And okay, so... And broken a sword with laughter. Okay, so Lon goes up to the dude. He's like, I need to know where the uh, where the crystal is. And Ambrose just says to him, this. <laughs> <laughs> Not what I was expecting, <laughs> but I like I it. I love that meme. I love that I meme love. so much. I've never it's seen that meme before. Meme. It's a good. It's meme. fantastic. I'll Look I'll it. I'll link you the video later. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah please do. But um, the, the these attendant, the, yeah, as you say, you've got to give them a coin or the tip water over your head, and it probably isn't. It's probably a coincidence. But years and years and years ago, I went to Thailand. In the middle of Thai New Year. Right. Or as they call it, Songkran. And Songkran oh, well, is well, you're incredible. Already doing better than me. Songkran is incredible because people just spray each other with water pistols all day, throw buckets of water over each other. It's a water festival. Oh my. That sounds like a lot of fun. It's amazing. It's it's a it's an awful lot of fun. Uh, and um we went to the beach for dinner that night, and it just evolved into a massive water fight. Oh my god! As soon as Love the meal was over, he he came out like this is. So we just want to put a little bit of ceremonial water on you, and I got a bucket tipped over my head, and all hell broke loose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's you had to nice. have been there, but it, it was it was it was amazing. It sounds like a really good time. It was. Well, it was a lot better than the time that I went to Spain during Easter weekend. Oh God. And I come from the south of America. Oh no! And... Where certain people have taken the uh, the uh, ceremonial dress of those who uh, go into the Easter parades of Spain. Um, if you don't know what I mean, uh, go look it up, and you'll yeah. see why think, it was think, so disturbing for me. Going. I know what you mean, and I can see why that would be <laughs> yeah. disturbing for you. I, 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 was, I was not Thailand, warned. The I was thing not warned. <laughs> The funniest thing of the entire day is that every time we went out and we got drenched and we came back to the hotel, <laughs> just dripping water into like the doormat. Everyone's like, what the hell happened to those people? I got drenched by well, an I'm sure they knew. The world. And this happened like four times in, in the same day. It was amazing. <laughs> I got drenched by an Oh, I'm sure they the knew. I mean, they, they actually, it, right? you know, live and work there. Yeah, so I mean, they, they know, they know what happened, but it's just like the looks we got. It was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see their hair again. So, uh... <laughs> back in Snake Dance. Yeah. Sorry, I just, I just want to mention that because it, it, it yeah, was kind it was, of cool. It was, but... it, was a nice, it, it was nice stories yeah. to share. But, it's um, dramatic. It, it worked. We, we get a bit of a, of, a, of a plot consistency here. Uh, the Doctor finally meets with Dojin. Uh-huh. Lo and behold, he is the hermit we've been seeing. That's him. Perhaps Nate but it's Nissa that says, look, Dojin. How did she know that was Dojin? Good question. Magic. Yeah. Anyway, he, he gets in by, by summoning the, with his crystal, and then they do the snake dance. The doctor gets bitten by a rubber snake. Oh, actually, I think that, no, actually. No, it was, it was a rubber snake when it actually bit them. Oh, when it actually bit them. Yeah. 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 They had like a real snake for the other shots. 
And he's like, well, I'm, I'm, I feel terribly guilty for what's happened to Tegan. How can I destroy the moral for, for good? And he's like, find the still point within yourself. So, yeah, that's some interesting... It's Again, with the Zen and the stuff, clearing your mind to the darkness. Yeah, right finding your center. It's, it's a so the doctor has, like... So the doctor is burdened by, like, the negative curse of his guilt over letting Tegan go, go ape shit and all this, this shit. So Dojin is there to help him get through that, get over that, and clear his mind to find the still point and stop the Mara. Yeah. So that's really, that's a really interesting I like. And actually, um, you guys may not have heard of this, but there is a, um, I want to say it's a TV channel called Crypt TV, where they have a monster that's called the Look See. And the mm -hmm. idea of it is that um, you have to give up something in order for it to not get you. And most of the time, the thing that it's trying to get you to give up is some part of your past that you regret. So there's like um, the father who lost his daughter and he has to give her up or else it's going to get her. Mm -hmm. So it, it's it's definitely a really cool concept when you use it in certain ways. Oh yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> and that was my tangent for the day, so let's continue. <laughs> well, then we get to the big ceremony. Oh yeah. Cave, which, oh, this is great. Uh, as we said, yeah. they, have, they have the ideas of the temptation, dressed like that. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember the exact lines, but he's offered three things uh, in the form of sand, I think. Dust. Oh, yeah. Dust, sorry. And the dust just slips through his hands and falls to the ground. Mm. Then a branch. It's like, this is death, and it's like, I drop the branch and the twig grows. Yeah, I turn my hand over and the, and the branch falls to the ground harmlessly. Yeah. And then the one you and mentioned then... earlier, which is greed. Yeah, which kind of ties into the whatever. But then, then he's just breaking from the script, and he's just like, "Hey, this is isn't a real crystal. This is just a goddamn puppet." <laughs> yeah, you he, want to see some he real just shit. completely um, goes off off uh, base here, breaks the fourth wall all over the place. You want to see some real shit, and then he takes. Plenty. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I have I have the uh, the transcript up because I wanted to be sure. Okay. Yeah. So okay, cool. the first temptation is fear. So he's handed the dust and says, "I do not fear." I spread my fingers and the dust trickles away. Yeah. The second temptation is despair, which is the withered branch. Um, <laughs> he knows that the, the yeah we won't we won't talk about that. Um, <laughs> sorry, he, sorry. he just basically drops the branches like I know the sap will rise again, roots will sprout, blah blah blah. So <laughs> it, it is basically just my hands are clean. Uh, I I can see clear. Essentially, I can see clearly now that the dust is gone. <laughs> um, and then you know he has the hope <laughs> against the despair. <laughs> Uh, you may have been a little too on the nose there. <laughs> um, but yeah, then, then then the third is that you have to look into the crystal without greed for knowledge. Which he doesn't do. He doesn't do. He just says, this is all a fake. Yeah, because it's fake. You don't need real journalism. Real <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Uh, and then he says, you want to see some proper magic? And he brings out the actual crystal. And the Doctor and Co. get there just in time to see See, Tegan come out and ruin everything. And all hell breaks loose. Everyone's screaming in agony. They're clutching their heads. The bar is manifesting in their head brains. Cat. Cat, stop. <laughs> so their no. fear and panic is bringing about negative emotion, which is resonating in the crystal to manifest the Mara into this world. Cat, seriously, stop. Oh, my God. <laughs> we can't and, do any of this on it. And so this leads us... Yeah, so this leads us to the Mara actually taking on physical form again, and it's better than Kenda. Yeah. Yeah. I like the snake. I I'll say it. Oh, like the snake it. enveloping her head? Well, that's, that's, that doesn't <laughs> that's a little goofy, yet. but yeah. That doesn't happen yet. I like the snake effect. Yeah, the snake effect's better than Kenda. 
Especially yeah, it looks like an actual snake. Let's put it that way. And not the the, uh, the pink monstrosity. Because I'm like, bless. I just love the kinder. Like, I really like this. Yeah. So the doctor channels more Zen energy, and you know, it's again. And then the Mara, as as you've linked there, manifests Tegan in its mouth, and that's a striking, haunting image. Even if it looks a little, you know. 80s yeah. screening. The Mara is trying to trick the Doctor by speaking with Tegan's voice now, not its own. And it's doing the same trick. Look at me. Look at me. Yeah. So Tegan is now the crystal. You have to look at the not face. However, There are only you know, two people theory. present here that are not affected by whatever the Mara is doing. The Doctor is one. The other one is uh, Dojin. Yeah. Tegan uh, obviously well, uh, is, is the puppet for the Mara, so she doesn't count, although she's technically yeah. not affected either. The grand but, uh, climax, and the, uh, the Doctor is zen enough to resist the Mara's influence, and that breaks the hold, and the Mara melts! Yeah, the, 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 um, the Doctor is able to reach out, pull the crystal out of the wall, and that kills the Mara dead. Bye-bye. And, yet, and then more good acting from Janet Fielding, where she's, she's absolutely revolted about what's happened. What she's done and named the Mara. And the story ends there. And Dave's just going to say, it's okay, it's okay. The Mara is gone for good. Cues and Melted Snake uh, Puppet, cue cr- end credits. Until Big Finish and BBC. And apart because... from the Mara, everybody, everybody lived. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah actually, yeah. So there Don't they all want to both freed from the influence? They, they're they still alive. because You see them moving after it all is over. <laughs> Ambril survives. Just, Cella survives. Everyone lives, yeah. The man with the microphone Doug, survives. Doug Dale's fun, yeah. But I should mention just Mara spinoff stuff. There was another Fifth Doctor audio with, uh, I think, I think it's Tegan, Nissa, and Turlock. It might just be Tegan and Turlock. I'm not sure. So let's do it. But they actually go back to the, to the Sumaran Empire, which mm-hmm. is all very modern. And the Mara comes back and it basically possesses everyone. Which shit happens. Yeah, but the other the other Mara appearance, actually, a lot wilder. The Mara reappears in a place you would never suspect. Chris Chibnall's writing room. <laughs> yes, exactly. Wait, no. <laughs> the Mara shows up at Trenzalore during the during a time of the Doctor. What? Hold on. I'm not shitting you. Not there's me. Called, there's a book called Tales of Trenzel. It's basically just short stories about a bunch of different Doctor villains attacking Trenzalor in their own way, and the Mara is one of them. Wow. Okay. All right. It's just, it's I'll just buy a it. weird pull, isn't it? That's a deep cut. Yeah, it's a pretty deep cut. That's a deep cut. I don't. I don't really remember much about the. I don't think you need to. I, I think Mara on Transalor is enough of a, of a of a hook. Yeah, but uh, that snake dance. Yeah. So, uh, one of you go first. Uh, me. One of you go first. Oh, sorry. I said, why don't you go first? Uh, ladies first, go cat. Ahead. Okay, then go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it took you long enough. <laughs> Thank, thank you for taking my, my act of trying to be, you know, chivalrous and throwing it back in my face. Fine. Screw you. I'll go first. <laughs> Fuck you, chivalry. Me. Chivalry is dead. Long live the wet head. Right. So, <laughs> I, I actually really like this one. I had seen Kinder. I had not seen Snake Dancer prior to, to watching it for, uh, for this podcast. And I'm glad I did. And I think this is better than Kinder overall. Obviously, the the thematic cli- climax of uh, Kinder is really, really strong. Not just because of the mirrors connection, but it it's a very <laughs> famous scene. Mm-hmm. It's infamous because of the terrible snake puppet, but it's a very famous scene. Even people who have don't watch Doctor Who have seen that clip in like clip shows and things. It's often renews. Okay. Uh, the world building in this is fantastic. I love all like the Chinese puppets. The fact it's p- poking fun at the kind of sloppiness of Kinder's effects. 
I love the character of, well, not love it, but I like the character of Lon. I think Martin Clues does a really good job uh, acting his part. I don't hate director Ambril. He's just an idiot, but the guy that plays him plays him well. Uh, Tanner's okay. Cello's all right. They're not like completely forgettable side characters like in some of the serials, both modern and classic. But the star of the show here is Janet Fielding. She gives a terrific performance as Tegan, which is multi-layered because she plays her as a frightened um, human person, and then she plays her as the Mara possessing her, so she goes full on evil. You can tell she's having an absolute ball playing evil Tegan. And it, it really does help the episode for me. And Peter Davison also gives a really strong performance. And it's my it's our first uh, introduction to Nyssa. And she does pretty okay for herself. Yes, she gets captured, but she has enough of, of moments where she is shown the initiative as opposed to the Doctor. So she's not just the companion. She actually has her own input. So yeah, really like this one. Lovely. Kat? I have to agree with a lot that he said. Um, however, I will also go ahead and say that even in this case, the side characters were really interesting too. You know, the ones that didn't contribute a whole lot to the story but were still present. Um, I really especially like uh, Lon's mother who, and her acting. She was fantastic in this. Yeah. Um, and we didn't give her nearly enough love, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, everybody, you know, did their part well. Um, obviously, Tegan is just a, a blast when she's evil and when she's nice. Um, I would like to see a little bit more with her so I can get a better idea of exactly what she's like when she's not possessed by a evil snake mind monster. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, the, the costumes are funny. Uh, the, you know, seeing this big festival where they're essentially marching themselves to their own doom at the very thing of the thing, uh, at the very fangs of the thing that they're trying to, um, celebrate being gone. Uh, I, I like the themes in this. I like the idea that, you know, there's all this mental stuff with, um, you know, essentially people making the Mar themselves. So I, I always really like this sort of uh, this sort of thing, and they manage to do it in a way that it's not super complicated, which I like. Well said. Yeah. It has a lot of mirrors in it. Ten out of ten. <laughs> Uh, no, okay, 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 okay. Actual, actual. Yeah. Should have no, expected but, that. Yeah, but uh, the only real flaw I have with it, part three, where things slow, they slow the plot down, but still give you enough look to make it at least interesting. That's the worst thing I can say about. It. Amazing world building, really great act, really good side character. Yeah, we should have given attention but she is great and i really like the disparate themes and what they're going the gonzo idea of thought into power the negative thought manifesting yourself into this snake which is just all the evil of the world taking all these ideas from christian mythology Buddhist mythology faith and uh, indigenous peoples and Taking it all and making a real interesting world out with lots of little lore. This is just really, really good Doctor Who. It's solid. And I'm glad that you both. I really like it. So, thumbs up for Snake Dance. Okay. Well, no, and, no, no, uh, Fre Frez, that's insensitive because the snakes don't have thumbs, so we're not allowed to have thumbs. <laughs> well, 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 okay, okay. Thumb attached to an arm with a snake tattoo. Up. <laughs> that that's better. Now then, all that remains is uh, what we're doing next. So, I believe the yeah. choice falls to you, Rania. Yes, it does. Uh, you may not uh -oh. be particularly grateful about that, so... Well, I um, gave you a good one. I will so, be honest. Uh, I will be honest with you. Uh, I didn't have much of an idea what I was going to do for next time. So I gave it some thought, and I've nominated a story with Sylvester McCoy. I nominated a story with Peter Davison. 
I'm not interested in the story with Tom Baker, and I'm not interested in the story with John Pertwee. There are two doctors that are missing from that list. Well, three, actually, but Colin Baker doesn't have that many stories to pick from. And we've had a lot of Colin we've Baker picked, on here. We've picked so many already. Yeah. Because... We're kind of I having mean... a moratorium on Colin Baker for the time being. So, uh, really, I've got the first and the second doctors to pick from. And okay. I kind of let everyone down with Inferno, so I felt that it was time that... Um, I made up for that with a real classic, all-time classic story. Oh, you're going to pick that one. Yes, I am. Okay. So next time on this podcast, Patrick Troughton stars in The Talons of Wen I, I mean, <laughs> the two of the Cybermen. The two of the Cybermen. Oh, boy. <laughs> Got my next up for a, few, for a second there. No, no. I've wanted this one for a long time. All right. And then the, the coin flip never kept coming up to do Patrick Trout and so <laughs> this is why they're considered one of the the most classic of classic serials it is definitely considered that yes oh you don't like it well we'll we'll have a lot to say but well I, I know judge. absolutely nothing about this so. oh, cool, Lord, we're, we're actually doing the tons of Wenshine no no <laughs> Oh, <laughs> hey, no. I'd be careful. You're giving me ideas. We will go. We will go. We already said we were never going to do that one. <laughs> Jerry basically has an insta veto for that story that ever comes up. Mm. Well, well, we'll deal with two minutes away. I'm, uh, we'll see how it holds up. Let's okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, in trying to do good, I think I've done. I've done bad. Oh no 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 no! It's just. We'll but it is considered by many to be one of the best classic serials. It is. It it's is. It's certainly one of the most famous. But I will just say one thing, Reniac, in the prosecution defense. That story that we keep bringing up is also considered one of the best Doctor Who stories ever by fandom. Yes, but on this occasion, they're probably right. But they're probably not. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in oh, any case, just, where, where did it just come trying to remember poll? all those official Doctor Who lists that we've been where looking up. Where they did it come up in the top twenty? <laughs> oh, I'm almost certain it came in the top twenty. Doctor Who fifty anniversary. Let's find it. the Tomb of the Cybermen. Turned. I still can't believe we're referencing this thing because it has such terrible decisions. Yeah, on it. it really does. Oh well. It's a little lower than you thought, but it is 23rd best. Okay. Which is about right for Maybe fandom. we have a chance there, then. Acor well, according to this thing, it's worse than Inferno. Yeah, because Inferno was 18. Wait, it beat the Curse of Fenric? Come on! Oh, God. No. Join no, us next I time, then, for a turkey in the two of the Cybermen. I can't. I can't. By the way, where's where did Snake Dance end up? Just where, just before we go, a hundred and twelve. What? <laughs> I told you this list is bullshit. One hundred seconds. This list, this list is bullshit. Anything that has to do with a fan poll with Doctor Who is never any good. Never. Mm. True. It's like I saw one that ranked all of the doctors, and while some of them makes made sense, like Colin Baker was fairly low. I don't they also usually made call David out David Tennant the top one. I don't usually call out critics. Well, sometimes I do, but these are these. This is this is fan bullshit. But but no. what culture? They've got they've got a Doctor Who um, channel now. I'm not going to name it because I don't want to give them free publicity. But they've got you can find it. They've got a Doctor Who dedicated YouTube channel now. And I swear, half their videos are just banging on Colin Baker. Which is sad, because I like Colin Baker. I mean, you like him enough to give him $75. There's one with like, yeah. like the, the top ten mistakes of, of the show. It's like, um, oh, Colin Baker bears full responsibility oh, for not coming not back list. to cover a generation yeah. for, for Time of the Rowling. Excuse me? He bears full responsibility for what now? Wait, what did you say? They, they argued that he had... He, the, the reason why the, the regeneration was crap for Time of the Rani was all down to Colin Baker. I mean, in Bizarro World, it makes sense. You have the, the man was fired. You're fired. Oh, by the way, do you want to come back? And the man was fired unjustly in some people's eyes. 
Man was farther than Jesseline in his own eyes. And I then said. they wanted him to come back to film a regeneration. He rightly told them to go stuff themselves. Actually, yeah. Uh, uh, actually, well, the way he tells it is, he says he, he it, it either goes that he did. I, I think I've told this on the time of the Ronnie Potter, but he either wanted to go out at the end of that story or the end of that season, and they wouldn't budge. So he said, "Fuck off," and they put Sylvester McCoy in a wig. Honestly, I still don't blame him because, I mean, he's universally panned as having one of the worst yeah. runs as the Doctor. So, and big most of it isn't right. his fault. I mean, that's how he was directed. That's how he was written. Not not well, everything listen, that Big Finish has done has been, has been uh, great, but uh, they did give him a proper regeneration. They got him to sing in one of his things, so yeah. And that hey, too. I got you that yes. for Christmas, didn't I? That was amazing. What a marvelous gift. Uh, Basically, a bit uh, finished think, good sometimes. What culture's Doctor Who thing? Not good sometimes. Doctor Who 2014 best story. Really bad. The drizzling shits. But anyway, next time we'll find out if this beloved Doctor Who story is as good as they say, or is the drizzling shits. Because next time on Doctor Who Reviews, Tomb of the Cybermen, and all that remains is for us three bozos to sign up. Yes, so thank you to Freezing Inferno for hijacking the outro. <laughs> uh, but also Who thank the you hell to... are you calling a bozo? I am a Pennywise, damn it. <laughs> you kind of deserve that for hijacking the outro. <laughs> but uh, thank you to, to Freezing Inferno and to Cat for uh, talking with me about Snake Dance. We really enjoyed it. Thank you to you for listening to us talk about Stainless. We hope you really enjoyed it. And join us next time for Patrick Troughton in Tomb of the Cybermen. And we hope that we enjoy it. But given what Jerry's just said, I'm not too hopeful now. Until then, bye for now. <laughs>